All right, today we're answering the question, do you really need to get stronger to build more muscle? And spoiler alert, it's going to surprise you because the answer is, eh, kind of. Let me explain. So when it comes to building muscle, there's generally two schools of thought, one of which is that exact concept of progressively overloading the muscle with more and more weight until that muscle is forced to adapt and grow. But there's a flaw when making that the foundation of all your training, and that's the fact that there's a tipping point. We're gonna need the whiteboard. Here's you, a frail little stick of a man. And this is your journey to build more muscle as you progressively overload. But as you attempt to lift more and more weight, you end up sacrificing the connection, which is simply putting the max amount of stress on the muscle you're intending to use during the lift for the entire duration of the set. But as you can see, there's this beautiful little sweet spot, and that's when you can attempt to lift more weight than your previous best, but still maintain enough of that connection and form to the point you're not just recruiting whatever the fuck muscles will get the job done. But as easy as it is to draw your little puny body and illustrate where the sweet spot is in real life, it's hard to figure out, and it's even harder to maintain because again, you're being compelled to constantly increase the weight. Training like that actually forces you away from the sweet spot, even if it's just to add a little bit more weight, like one of these vanilla wafers. One of the first nipples I ever saw was surrounded by an areola just like this. I'm still disappointed. Now the exact inverse of that is training for metabolic stress, or you can think of it as high volume training or chasing the pump or I just like to think of it as that bonus level of the Simpsons arcade game where they're blowing up giant balloons of their head. To me, that makes sense. Now, the interesting part about training like this and valuing the connection over all else is you're gonna get to a point where you can't lift any more weight. But I can't overstate this, that's the fucking point. You see, in the previous pursuit we talked about of progressive overloading, when you do an exercise, you're gonna end up with sets like this. A warm up set, and then probably another warm-up set, and then a set with a moderate amount of weight, but stop at eight reps because you don't want to waste any effort. Then a set with heavier weight, and you still get those eight reps, and then a final set where it's an all-out war, and you only get seven reps, and you cry a couple of tears in your logbook, but that's the end of the exercise. And that, in a nutshell, is the exact reason I have a problem with training like this, because I don't think life's a Disney movie. I don't think you're trying to work together with your muscles as a team to lift the weight and achieve the goal and live happily ever after, and draw a penis on the cover of the VHS box. I think you should treat your muscles like adversaries because that's what they are. Why else would your calf wake you up in the middle of the night with a Charlie horse? It's because it's trying to fucking kill you. I mean, your body's actually trying to tell you something, but that's beside the point. Don't get lost in the weeds. That's why I love training to induce that metabolic stress because you really are kicking your own ass and treating yourself accordingly. For example, when you attempt to lift more weight and you're able to, you don't just jot it down in your logbook and pat yourself on the back. You say, Big fucking deal, do it again. And then when your body fails to, you take a few pounds off or drop the pin and say to yourself, oh, you poor little bitch, here's some baby weight for you. Do it again. The goal you should actually have is to humiliate that muscle and induce so much metabolic stress that you're curling tens and look like you're about to pass out. So how does that help answer the question, do you need to get stronger to build more muscle? This one simple statement. A strong muscle doesn't always equate to a big one, but a big muscle, is always a strong one. I'm sure you've seen guys in the gym look like an average Joe, and then you're watching them, and they deadlift a house. And you're like, what the hell? And as you look closer, you're like, okay, they're just built to move weight. They got a compact frame, long arms, those insertion points are just built for leverage. They have strong muscles, but not big ones. And that answers the question. It's the opposite, because even if your training's never centered around lifting more weight, as that muscle gets bigger, it's gonna get stronger. And with great power, comes great responsibility. Not to ego lift like an asshole. And don't worry, I'll have the PPL program ready for you guys around Christmas, so if you wanna kick your ass as a gift to yourself, you'll be able to. But if you haven't got a chance, check out the other 30-day programs. I'll link them below, both of them. Again, 30 days, 20 videos, 20 bucks. Pretty damn simple. And if you haven't watched these two yet, I'd watch those, but most importantly, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and get after it, get growing. Talk to you soon.